What's up guys, CB Modi here back with another video and today we're here with this month's PC build plan. A plan that's targeted at a budget office based system. And when it comes to custom builds, a lot of us think of super high end video cards, high end CPUs and just overall really high end and premium builds. But there's definitely a lot of builds out there and a lot of people that A, don't need that kind of power and B, just need something to get by. So this kind of system that we're putting together today would be perfect to just get the office job done and and that's basically it. Sure, you can definitely play some games, which we'll get to a little bit later, but overall this system is designed to be fast, snappy and responsive, but it doesn't need the processing power of high-end i7s or high-end Threadripper type of CPUs. So today we're going to be focusing on a fast and snappy system that delivers blazingly fast office performance. Now one more thing I do want to keep in mind before we do kick off this video is that Ryzen or Zen based APUs are not on the market yet. So so good quality AMD chips with good quality graphics are unfortunately not on the market yet. Sure there are previous generation APUs out, but let's face it, in terms of today's modern technology they're not exactly the most advanced chips out there. Either way, let's kick things off with the CPU. And in the CPU department we went with the Intel Core i3-7100. Now whilst this isn't the latest 8th generation CPU, it still offers a 3.9GHz speed with 2 cores and 4 threads, but more importantly it also too doesn't have too shabby onboard graphics. Now while some will mention why we didn't go with the latest 8th generation, that is a pretty simple answer and that is cost savings. Because the 7100 is now last gen, a lot of stores are starting to throw them out and as of at the time of recording, the store that I usually go to is actually offering $50 less on this particular part over the new generation 8th chip. So in terms of money saving, sure we're not getting the greatest and latest 8th gen chip performance, but we're definitely saving saving about $50 to $60 in terms of our CPU here. And then also too on the flip side, why we didn't go with Ryzen and went with an Intel Core i3 was pretty simple because there is no Ryzen based CPUs yet that also to offer integrated graphics. Now yes, you could make the argument spend about a hundred bucks on a graphics card and boom, you're going to have way better performance. But at the end of the day, this kind of a build is delivering snappy performance without actually blowing a massive price tag. For example, if we were to swap out a similarly spec motherboard for what we're going to pick up today day and also to throw in a video card we'll be spending about an extra hundred or so dollars more on the AMD Ryzen build with a video card. Yes the argument will be made that the video and graphics will be a lot better on that system but overall in an office situation where you're loading Word documents it's really just not needed. So for today's build we did stick with the Intel Core i3-7100. However again when Ryzen APUs do come out this kind of build would switch like that over to an AMD Ryzen based APU because obviously better performance, better graphics, a overall better package. Moving on, however, we do get the motherboard which we did grab ourselves, the ASUS Prime B250M-K motherboard. With dual RAM slots and some decent I.O., it really is just going to get the job done and not exactly do anything too fancy. It does have some pretty decent onboard audio for a basic budget motherboard and overall will get us by with the i3 that we are putting in here. Overall, there's not really too much to say about it. It has some nice aesthetics with like a black and white scheme going on here, but overall as a budget and fairly solid motherboard, I have to say it will definitely get the job done. RAM wise, we went with 8GB of DDR4 memory coming in at, what, $120? It seems that DDR4 RAM prices have shot through the roof and really for that matter all RAM prices has really shot through the roof. Back in June of this year, if we were to build exactly the same system, this RAM kit would have cost about $80 and we could have got 16 gigs easy for the price that we are paying here today. In fact, I remember when I built my X99 system back when X99 was about a month or two old, DDR4 had just come out and there was like four RAM options on the market and they were all pretty expensive. I bought myself four 8GB sticks for $112 each. This time round, we're paying $120 for a single stick of 8GB of RAM, which is exactly the same spec that is in my desktop over there. That is uh, really, really crazy to see. DRAM shortages have really kicked us here in Australia and uh, $120 is what we're going to be stuck with. Even though it is an office system, I really did want to throw in 16 gigs of RAM and if you do have the budget, I do strongly recommend it, but eight gigs will definitely get you by. But damn, those prices are absolutely crazy. 
Storage-wise, it's a pretty simple setup and a standard setup that you usually go for. I grabbed ourselves a 256GB Intel 545 SSD, and whilst it isn't an NVMe-based drive or anything super fast in terms of even a SATA drive, it will deliver snappy performance, and because it is just a general SSD, it is going to be perfectly fine for what we need. NVMe definitely offers way better speeds and better performance, and for an offer system would deliver even more snappy responsiveness, I guess. Uh, but if you do go ahead and compare them side by side, once you load up Word and that kind of stuff, you're not seeing too much of a performance increase. And honestly, I'd rather save that extra money and put it into what we'll talk about in just a moment, than going ahead and buying a smaller SSD, which offers theoretically faster speed. And that money savings, we grabbed ourselves a one terabyte WD Blue Drive for like next to nothing. Really, really cheap these days. One terabyte drives is going to be perfect for an office system. Again, because it's an office system, you're storing some Word documents, you're storing some photos, you're not really storing any massive game files, large textures or anything like that, so I do think a one terabyte drive would be perfect for a build like this. Case-wise, we're looking in the deep cool frame case, which is only $35 and it is absolute steal, and honestly, I've seen these guys go for $10 uh, on some decent sales, especially here in Black Friday and Cyber Monday and the Christmas sales, definitely look out for this case. There's a few quirks which we'll get to in another video from now, but for $35, it is definitely going to do the job, hold everything together and not be too bad. Sure, there's no window, but the parts that we did pick out aren't exactly the most flashy and high-end, so it'll be nice just to throw a side panel on that and not too much of a worry. And then power supply-wise, we grabbed ourselves something that was super basic, which was the Corsair VS350 power supply which again is Corsair's lowest end offering, but it is better than those weird dodgy ones that you see in pre-built systems and on eBay and stuff. Sure, it's not the greatest, sure we could have gotten a better power supply, but it is from a reputable manufacturer, it isn't too bad, so we're going to be running with it here. And that's about it for this system. Once we throw all those parts together, we should get a pretty snappy and responsive office-based system. Now, because it is an office system, I do recommend throwing in a CD DVD drive as most people who work in offices also do have CDs and DVDs that they may need to play up on their computer. Sure, for us in the enthusiast space, we don't think of CDs or DVDs at all, but there's still a lot of people out there who do use this technology, so it would be worth throwing in a CD and DVD drive. And then finally, also to maybe even a wireless card like like this guy that I checked out in this video right here would definitely make a decent budget offering from, well, I guess TP-Link. Decently priced, decently specced, and overall gets the job done. And for about 600 Australian dollars, this PC is definitely going to be plenty when it comes to doing office-based tasks. You can spend that little bit more to grab yourself a copy of Windows 10, or if you want to jump on places like Kingwin, you can totally do that and grab yourself a more budget-oriented version of Windows. But overall, this is going to be a definite boss system, but Let's not exactly speculate on what these parts might do, what kind of performance we may get, let's actually build it. So do stay tuned as in about a week or so's time we'll actually have a follow up to this video where we build this system out, do some benchmarks and all that kind of stuff. In fact, there's already some parts starting to show up right here, such as this guy, which was the motherboard that we just talked about. So definitely that build is coming down the line. So when it comes to budget and sort of snappy little systems, we'll definitely be covering that really, really soon. Otherwise, guys, let me know down in that comment sections what you would like to see me test on this particular system that we are throwing together. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.